we still got snow in the parking lot over here, guys. It's definitely winter time. The ice is starting to melt on some of these lakes, but the water temperature is cold. Got a lot of stain. I mean, just looking at the lake, it looks like it's about a foot of visibility. I'm thinking the water temps are gonna be high 30s probably. Maybe, might see 40. You know, we've had some sunshine the last couple of days. There he is, jig bite, a little jig bite. There you go. Who says pork doesn't work? Old school pork chunk, old school pork chunk. Crumbling Pro, Pro Caster, three eighths ounce. It's been slow, man. It's been slow. That sucker catches fish when it's nasty 39 degree water temps muddy look how pale that fish is this fish is for Dion Hibden the old Uncle Josh pork number 11 <laughs> oh man it's tough out here there's a grinder what's up folks Gabe Montgomery here 10 horse mining YouTube channel and today I want to talk about jig trailer specifically a wintertime cold water jig trailer that's all but forgotten and it's the Uncle Josh pork frog, specifically the number 11 pork frog. I'm going to dive into the pros, the cons, and the reasons why you should definitely consider checking this out in the cold water period. This is straight up old school bait. You guys have been fishing for a long time. This is probably something you still consider throwing. You may have forgot about it. If you're new to fishing, you, you may not have even heard of this. It's actually a pork frog jig trailer and I got a little bit of history I'm gonna read a little bit of this I thought this was really really interesting this is an excerpt I got from www.onthewater.com online and it says longtime fishing buddies Urban Schreiner and Alan P Jones were both very fond of using live frogs as bait and this is from 1921 when the fishing season rolled around they were excited and planned to spend much of their time fishing for black bass in Wisconsin's Jordan Lake. So they would cast plugs in the morning and then during the midday it got really tough so they'd use live frogs. Apparently there was a live frog shortage in 1921. So they went out on a quest to make their own frogs and it brought them to a butcher in Oxford, Wisconsin where they took a slab of fat back with a rind on it. Um, they cut it into a number of frog-shaped pieces. Throughout the summer of 1921, the two explains with the shape looking for one with sufficient tail action and enough meat for the fish to smell and the angler to cast. The bait turned out to be so successful that in 1922, Jones and Schreiner founded the Uncle Josh Bait Company. So, out of necessity, that's where the pork frog was found. Their first order was about $300 worth of the model called the number 11 pork frog and then it goes about how they cured it and got everything cut up and the whole the whole process of the uncle josh pork frog from the origination but i read all it's a really good article by the way go check it out it's got it's pretty detailed about how this all came to be the article goes on to say that unfortunately in mid-december of this year which is 2015 word began to circulate uncle josh would no longer be producing the pork rind baits the issue, explained a company representative, is that Uncle Josh has been unable to get the quality fat back they need to produce the durable pork baits. Um, it says, these days pigs are brought to slaughter at six months. It used to be they were two to three years old, which means the skin and fat back are thinner and no longer suitable for fishing baits. So in December of 2015, Uncle Josh ceased to produce the pork rind. And this went on and on and on. And like they said, you know, the pigs are too lean. They were harvested at a younger age. They just didn't have that fat built up. So you got to have that fat on the rind. A lot of people were upset about that. A lot of the diehard fishermen that use this bait in cold water. Fortunately, after a three to four year drought, they reissued the Uncle Josh pork frog in 2020. And this got a little bit of tension from the mainstream, but for the old school, you know, pork frog jig fans, I'm sure they were excited. They probably went out and bought a bunch of them. And I went and bought some, 
You know, I used to fish them a little bit, but it wasn't something that I depended on. So I picked up some and I've been playing around with it and I wanna talk a little bit about what I have found. God, that's a... There we go. Decent fish. Oh yeah, that's a decent fish. Jake fish. go. A little Cumberland Pro jig in the mouth. 3 8 ounce Pro Caster. Fish ate it. had like three bites right here. The water's pretty cold. It's like 42 degrees. And I'm in the shade just fishing this kind of bluffy type stuff. Deeper water. That fish was in about 15 foot of water. It's, it's beautiful out here. There's icicles and stuff. Good bite. Good bite. It's slow out here. And it's cold but I didn't get skunked. When Uncle Josh brought the pork frog back into production in 2020, they released two different sizes. They had the number 11 and the number 10. The number 11 is a little bit smaller. It's 2.5 inches by one inches. And the number 10 is four by 1.25. From what I've heard, the number 11 is a little bit smaller than the original number 11. I wanna say the original was about three inches. I've heard a few people say, why don't you bring out like a mid-size something that's, um, reminiscent of the original number 11. Now, why would you even consider throwing a pork trailer in cold water situations? There's several reasons. One is the action. When you're fishing plastic in cold water, unless it's super soft plastic, it gets stiff. It loses a little bit of its action. Now, you don't need a whole lot of action in cold water because the fish are lethargic, but you do want it to look natural. And that is one thing that pork does over most other plastics. Second thing is the feel. Pork has a really natural feel. It's actually got pork fat in it and it's just juicy. It's like a little piece of steak there. The fish like it, they hold on to it. The other reason that they hold on to it is because of the scent. And this is probably the reason I think it's most important in cold water. It sits in this little sauce right there. You know, the pork frog just soaks in this sauce and this is salt and water. <clears throat> it's infused with the salt and it leaches out that, you know, that scent in the cold water. And scent's a big deal in cold water. This thing works in two ways for you. It's got the feel and it's got the scent. So when the fish are lethargic, you know, they're smelling that thing. It kind of entices them to come over there and they grab it. It feels natural. They're going to hold on to it a lot longer than plastic. And that's key because a lot of times in winter, the bite is so subtle. It's hard to feel, you know, you get a little mushy bite and we're cold, you know, we got gloves on, we're just kind of bundled up. Our sensitivity is not the greatest in the winter time. Maybe, you know, we're just, it's hard to focus when it's really, really cold. So we need all the advantages we can have. And I think that pork offers an advantage of, you know, that fish holding onto it for a lot longer. piece of wood right on that way down 37 degree water man they're scattered get in here all right little jig little pork jig there you go porky porky swine it's working Cold water, it is getting done. This is a little 3 8 ounce Cumberland Pro Procaster. Got it kind of finessed out, got the skirt trimmed up. Left the rear of the skirt a little bit long, but number 11, Uncle Josh, pork frog, pork rind, pork craw, whatever you want to call it. It's fun. Another thing that's unique about the Uncle Josh pork frog is it really slows the fall rate of your bait. It's a chunk style bait, it's got a lot of surface area, and chunks typically do slow the fall rate of your jig, but pork is more buoyant than plastic. So when your fish are lethargic, a lot, there's a lot of suspended fish in the winter time. And I do believe that if that bait is falling really slow through those suspended fish before it gets to the, the bottom, 
you're gonna get a few bites off that slow fall rate. Fall rate's important with the jig. You guys out there that are long time pork frog fishermen, if I'm missing anything, please leave it in the comment section. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about this. Shout out to Ron, cause Ron DeRosa is the guy that kind of got me into this. You know, obviously when they reintroduced the Uncle Josh pork frog in 2020, kind of piqued my attention. And I'd been out in the boat with Ron several times and saw him catching fish on the pork frog. So combination of the two things got me curious about this. Let's talk a little bit about the cons of the Uncle Josh pork frog and it's the price really. They're expensive folks. This little jar right here has three number 11 pork frogs in it. It costs 12 bucks. So they're $4 a piece. But having said that, this thing will last forever as long as you put it back in this little carton. They don't tear up. The fish cannot pull the legs off of them. You know, it's hide. It's just, it, it retains that shape. As long as you keep your frog in this little serum, it's gonna last pretty much forever. Now, occasionally, after tons and tons of fish, it may pull off. I've seen it loosen up, the little hole loosen up where they fly off. But for the most part, you can catch, it's almost like, a, you know, like Z-Man stuff. You can just catch a ton and ton of fish on one frog. So yeah, they're $4 a piece but they last forever. And the more fish you catch on them, the more it softens this up and makes it actually better. All right, we've been talking about this little pork frog for a while, but let's look at it. You guys haven't even seen this thing yet. I'll pull it out, pull it out of here. It's nasty, soupy stuff, but it is the juice of goodness in here. And this is what it looks like. It's plain Jane, super small, super finessey. That is it, I'm trying to not drip this on everything. But that is, that's the Uncle Jock's pork frog. Pretty boring, right? Pretty simple, but it has that profile, it has that crawl type profile, just kind of finessey pinchers. And from the side, there's your fat chunk. That is where all the juices are contained. You have the hide side right here, and then you have the fat side right here. Depending on how this is rigged up, you're gonna get a different fall rate. So this side facing down is gonna really slow your fall rate. If you have it this way, a little bit faster fall rate, it encourages these to kind of flip up like that. I don't know if you can see that, like that. So it's gonna increase your fall rate a little bit. And I don't think it matters all that much as far as if it's on the bottom. One thing I will tell you, there's a really small little hole right here. I don't know if you can see that hole. There's a little small hole and that's where your hook goes through. You can't string this up. You can't thread this up on your hook shank like you can a plastic chunk. If you get one that's really, really tough, um, you can take a meat tenderizer, like a little mallet, and kind of smash it down just to kind of loosen this fat up and make it more pliable. Dang, he was chewing on it. He was chewing on it. He's chewing on it, boys. Really small keeper. They're on the points, man. Ain't no doubt about it. With the motor running even, <laughs> didn't matter. There you go. He ate that sucker. Let's talk a little bit about rigging up the pork frog on a jig. We just got a 3 8 ounce Cumberland Pro jig here. And what I've done is I've taken a small piece of power worm. I like a power worm. It has scent. It just kind of goes along with the uh, pork frog. So just thread you up a worm or hold it up there. And you want to pinch it off about where the bend starts. This keeps that pork from sliding up here and spinning around. One of the downsides of pork versus plastic is if this chunk spins around, so you got your chunk on here like this, if it spins around and gets like this, you are not driving that hook through that pork. There's no way. Plastic, if you really jack on them, you can move that hook point through the plastic, but pork, no siree. So to help with that, you put this little piece of uh, plastic worm or, or whatever piece of plastic that you have and you wanna use, and that keeps it and encourages this, this thing to stay out here. It can't really spin and pivot and get in the way of your hook point. Oh, black and blue jig, little pork chunk, Cumberland Pro. Yes, sir. All right, let's put one of these little chunks on there and see what it looks like. We've got our little piece of worm on there. There's a little hole in the front of this chunk. So you just take your hook point and kind of fill around and you'll find that hole pretty, pretty easily. It's right there, we found it. You're just gonna pull it right through. And there you go. That's what it looks like. It's nice and finessey. It's got a lot of action, holds a lot of scent. Now, one thing you do have to do at the end of each fishing trip is take this pork off and put it back in the container because it will dry up or shrivel up like a piece of beef jerky. So all you do is just hold your jig like this and turn it to the side and it pops right off. Super easy, slides right off. And you just take it 
and put it back in its little home and it will be good for the next trip. You know, this soaks overnight or until your next fishing trip, it's got this salt in there, salt water, and it just gets uh, re-energized, lasts forever. What gear am I using to throw this little Cumberland Pro Procaster with a pork frog on it? Been using a seven foot medium heavy Falcon Kara rod. One thing I will tell you about a jig, you do want to spend your money on a good quality jig rod, something that's sensitive. You know, you can skimp on a moving bait rod, something like a spinner bait, chatter bait, something that's moving. It's not quite as crucial, but if you're going to put your money on a rod, definitely want to spend it on something that's bottom bouncing bait, jig rod, worm rod, something like that. Cause that, that makes a huge difference um, in the amount of bites that you feel and the kind of cover that you're pulling your jig through. Just so spend your money on a good rod. 15 pound test is perfect for this jig. It's a three eighths ounce jig, seven to one gear ratio real hey give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel also wanted to remind you that we are doing live streams on monday nights at 7 30. lots of great guests lots of good information check those out the pork frog has been around forever it kind of got replaced when plastics got popular you can actually buy a plastic chunk the zoom pro chunk very popular and it works but i do believe that this has a slight advantage over the plastic in cold water all the different sizes, shapes, and colors of plastic kind of put the Uncle Josh pork frog on the back burner. It's kind of overwhelming. This is kind of simple. It's old school. And if you want to go out there and try something vintage, like something your grandpa fished with, go try some of these. They're fun. I think there's days when they do prefer this over the plastic. Some days it doesn't matter. You know, everybody's got their confidence, bait, and you can get bit on anything in the wintertime. But I think there is something special about fishing something that's old school, taking you back to the roots, man, where it all started. This is the original jig trailer, Uncle Josh Pork Frog number 11. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till next time.